In this video, we're going to look at how to make a payment request in the Turing scheme 2022 to 23. So when you're logged into the project reporting tool, you just need to scroll down on the dashboard until you get to the payment request. And you can click on make a payment request link, and that will take you to the payment request overview. And just below that, there is a section for payment requests. Um, where you can select this link to start that process. And below that is a section for uploading evidence. So this section, just for reference, is if you don't have the evidence at the point you're making the payment request, um, you need to provide that at a later point when you do have, uh, when you do have that evidence ready, um, you can upload it here. So in order to start the payment request process, um, you need to have bank details uh, set up and approved in your profile. And you also need to make sure that you don't have a change request uh, in progress. So we'll look at the first point uh, firstly. So that is uh, bank details. So up here, if you click on profile, and you can see in my profile, I've got bank details that are approved. Uh, you need to make sure that you've got that before the system will let you request a payment. Um, if you don't, um, if they're, they've been rejected or they're in draft, um, you just need to come into here, um, update them with your up-to-date bank details, um, submit those, uh, they'll then be reviewed and approved uh, when ready, um, and then you can uh, request that payment. Um, the second point is, uh, in order to make a payment request, is that you can't have any change requests in progress. So you need to make sure that everything is already up to date. Um, now I've got a payment, uh, sorry, a change request in draft at the moment, and you'll see when I click on this, I get an error. It says you cannot make a payment request, um, and that's either for two reasons. Number one is that if you have a change request in draft. So this message advises me that um, I either need to submit the draft change request and await the outcome, or I need to delete or cancel the, the draft change request. Um, so we'll have a look at that in a second. Um, the, the other reason is if the change request is awaiting approval. Um, and there's nothing really you can do at that point. You just need to uh, wait for that to uh, an outcome to that change request um, before you can then request uh, the payment. And the reason for that is that you, you of course, need to, uh, when you're requesting payment, you're requesting that against your most up-to-date project, uh, which is um, amended according to change requests. So if you have submitted a change that, for example, changes uh, some participant numbers, this payment request uh, needs to know what those final numbers are. So you need to, uh, it, it needs to wait for that final response uh, to be received. And in, in the case it's a draft, um, it's, it, it wants to make sure that you, you, you're aware that you haven't yet submitted that change. So if in my case, uh, I'm gonna switch to, uh, back to the dashboard, and I'm gonna go into my application. And if I scroll down, we can see here that I have a change request that's in draft. So the system's warning me that I have this in draft and I need to uh, do something with it before I can request payment. So if I click into this change request, um, it will continue from, if you're continuing the draft one, it will uh, jump into where you left it. Now, as mentioned, you've got two, two uh, pathways you can take. If you need to submit this change request um, because you're partway through um, making a change or submitting your participant list, uh, then you just need to finish this process off. If, however, maybe you started the draft but you, you no longer need it, um, you need to click on this option of cancel all changes. Um, and that may not appear on every screen, so you might need to hit the back button if you're on a different screen. Um, but you'll eventually see this cancel all changes option. And you can then select that and it will just ask you to confirm that you want to cancel this change request. 
and I can select yes, cancel all of my changes that are in this change request. And now when I go to this section, uh, we can see that that draft change request is no longer there. So if I go back to my dashboard and back into payment requests, when I select request a payment, it's now going to let me start that payment request process. So the first question in the payment request form is, do you need to make any changes to your project plan? So this is checking that everything is up to date. So our mobility groups are all up to date, uh, participant numbers and the participant details uh, have all been provided uh, in full. So if you need to make changes, you can select yes, and it will direct you towards that change request process. However, if everything's up to date, you can select no and continue. The next question is asking us to select which point of expenditure we're ready to receive payment for. So in this example, I've got the organizational support as the first option. So I haven't yet requested that. And then I've got the February, March, and April points of expenditure. And the so dependent on what I select here, if I select a February, that will be requesting payment for all the mobility groups uh, with a point of expenditure of February. Um, so I'm going to select February in this case and continue. So the next question asks, are you requesting the full payment for your selected point of expenditure? So what this means is, am I ready to request payment for all the participants that are linked to this point of expenditure? So if, for example, I have two mobility groups that are happening in March and they each have 100 participants, so 200 in total, uh, and they're linked to the point of expenditure for February that I've selected. So this question would, if I select yes, I need to be sure that the 200 participants linked to this point of expenditure are fully completed. And we'll look at that uh, in a second, but by fully completed, it means that all of the columns in the participant spreadsheet are are completed um, because they're, they're all mandatory, apart from a few which state they're optional, but all the others are mandatory. Um, and if they're not entered, um, we'll then see some errors on this screen, which I'll demonstrate and how to resolve those. So if I was to select yes, I want to receive the full payment for February POE and continue, it's gonna give me an error. And it says, you must update your participant list with details for all of your participant lists on the point of expenditure before requesting a full payment or requesting a partial payment for the participants you have details for. So it's advising that the participant details uh, aren't uh, fully completed and uh, therefore I'm, I'm not ready to, uh, the system isn't, uh, able to take me on to the next stage. Um, we'll have a look at that in a second, but if I change that to no, so I'm, I only want to receive partial payment. So if if in the event you, you haven't uh, got all the details for the 200 participants um, and you're, you're only ready, maybe only one of those mobility groups out of the two uh, are fully complete. So you've provided those 100 participants and uh, you can select no partial payment for this February POE and continue. So it then asks you to download the spreadsheet, uh, participant list spreadsheet. And this is different to your main participants list spreadsheet where you provide the details for the participants. This is going to download a, a slightly different one and it's a copy of all of the participants that you fully completed. Um, as I say, all of the mandatory columns uh, have been entered and it's going to have a column uh, for selecting yes or no whether I want to request those as part of this payment. So let's have a look at that. So I'm going to download the participant list and open it up. And you can see here that there's two rows for participants. So I'm going to enable editing. 
So in this example, uh, I've got mobility group going to Denmark. And in this case, I've fully completed two participants, Patrick and Amy. Um, and all of their details, apart from a few fields that are optional, um, are fully completed. Now, if you're wondering at this point, where are the rest of my participants? Um, there's an explanation up here. So this spreadsheet contains the participants that you have most recently uploaded into the project reporting tool and only those which have been fully completed. So any participants that you've only provided, say, half the details for, you can't yet request payment for them because uh, all, all of the details need to be provided before you can request payment. Um, now, I've actually got more participants in my main participant spreadsheet uh, that aren't displayed here because they're not fully completed. Um, so if you get to this stage um, and you're not seeing the participants that you would like, um, what you need to do is uh, come out of the payment request. So cancel this request and go into the back to the dashboard into your application and you want to upload your participants list or update it. So we're going to add or update participants list. We're going to download the participants list. And when we open this one, we'll see all of our participant details. Now you can see here that those two participants that I fully completed rows four and five showed up in that partial payment spreadsheet. So they're ready to request payment for. However, rows six to 12, I haven't provided any other details for. And so they're not ready for payment. So if I wanted to request payment, I need to fill in all of these details. Um, and there's a few columns that are optional. So address line two is optional um, in both receiving and sending, um, but do enter that if you have it. And then there's a few um, costs um, that are noted as optional at the end of the spreadsheet. So send costs um, is only relevant if you uh, if the participant is uh, a send participant. And similarly, exceptional costs is only relevant to disadvantaged participants and exceptionally expensive travel is only relevant where you've selected to request a grant for that. So I'm gonna cancel out of this, cancel this change request. So you can submit those changes um, to make sure that you've provided all of the participants you're ready to request for. And then you can go back into the request a payment process. Um, now, if you'd uploaded uh, and provided all of the participants for that whole point of expenditure, then you'll be able to select, yes, I want to receive full payment, uh, and it won't give you an error. Um, now in, th in this case, in my example, I haven't yet done that, so I'd still get an error. Um, but once you've provided that, uh, you no longer will. Um, so I'll just continue showing you the partial payment. Uh, so this spreadsheet, so asking us which participants we want to request as part of this partial payment spreadsheet. So I've got two participants um, and let's just say I only want to request payment for one of them. So I select yes in uh, this participant, so Patrick, I save, close, and then continue to the next screen and upload that same spreadsheet that you just saved. So that's that file, so I'm gonna select that. 
and that's accepted and uploaded. I'm going to save and continue and read and agree the declaration, continue, and I then get the check your answers screen. So this is showing that I'm just doing a partial payment. In this case, I've uploaded this spreadsheet, agreed to the declaration. Uh, and so I can change and review if I need to, cancel if I need to, but otherwise submit this payment request. So you then get a payment reference number. Uh, it say it's been submitted uh, and that will go off for review. So you can review the status. Um, you'll receive an update by email uh, on any approval or rejection. Um, but the you can also go into payment request from the dashboard and you can see that payment request and its status here. And you can also click into it and view what you submitted. In the event that the payment request is not accepted, a reason for that will be provided on this screen. One last thing to look at in relation to payment requests is your budget summary. So within your application is a link to view your approved budget summary and approved project plan. So if we look at budget summary, this shows a breakdown of our total approved project cost by month. And if we expand the sections, we can see for this starting month, the approved budget, the current payment that's been requested, the payment that's been approved, and the last column is the current budget remaining. So the amount that you've yet to request for payment. So below that, we can see the number of participants and the amount that we've requested. So we just requested one participant as part of a partial payment request. So we can see that displayed here. Our mobility group durations for reference. Um, and so we can view the breakdown per month. And we can also view our organizational support at the bottom. And there's a second view to this screen. If we change to individual view, we can see it by mobility group. So we can see a breakdown for this mobility group shipbuilding in Denmark happening in March. I can see the breakdown for the participants, so the cost of living, the accompanying participants, travel costs, send costs, uh, and so on. The second section is the approved project plan. So this is more of a high level view of your whole project broken down by month. Uh, so for each mobility group start month, you can see the number of mobility groups uh, in those, the month the payment request should be made, when your organization should be paid in, and the current approved budget for that month.